Did I miss brows in here somewhere? No brows? I could adjust my brows in Mass Effect. Are you telling me I can't do it here? Hi, hello. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're here. We're doing it. Y'all, we're doing it. I'm so excited I could cry. I'm a huge D&D fan. I love Divinity Original Sin 2. And I cannot wait to experience this journey with each and every one of you. It's going to be so amazing to see all the places that I'm familiar with in the world of Faerun. We're at friends. First impression. This is giving Vermintide. This is giving Underdark. Waterdeep has the Undermountain beneath it. It should be underneath the Yawning Portal, if I'm not mistaken. You go down the well, and it's like an adventurer thing, like an amusement park <laughs> for mercenaries. I've played an absolute shit ton of D&D &D and I'm very invested in specifically elven lore. If you need to know about any of the elven subtypes or anything about Evermeet, I'm your girl. Oh. All right, selecting our difficulty. Balanced. Oh, look, he's right there. Oh. Y'all can see my cursor, perfect. Okay, well, I'm really biased and I feel like I'm gonna have to choose balance just because Asterion's right there. I haven't seen anything about the game. Not a damn thing. I haven't watched any trailers. I haven't done anything. This is completely and utterly first time. We're gonna do Balanced. I've played Divinity Original Sin 2. I very much enjoyed it. I know how those mechanics work. I'm banking on this being similar. Asterion, my love, let's go. Get Yankee. <gasps> no. Uh uh. Oh, fuck. Oh no, and she knows too if she's gay with Yankee. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, so if you're not familiar with, you? if you're not familiar with Illithid, um, that was what that man was, the little tentacly man. Uh, they're bad news bears. <laughs> uh, the, the gif, Yankee, who is like the greeny space LV kind of individual, they're like a whole like kind of like life goal purpose thing is to fight Illithid. Um, which I think is a great juxtaposition that they have her there, and you get to see that. Those little doohickeys? 
they turn you into an illithid, if I'm not mistaken. I've only ever seen them and heard of them going in through the ear, though. I've never, never, never with the eye. Oh. So, very quick story time. Very, very quick. I have only played in one campaign with Illithid. Um, I was playing a Sun Elf Paladin, Oath of the Ancients, of Corallon Lorethian. And uh, we came across a cave complex that we didn't know was inhabited by Illithid. And uh, Chilis, Dawn Bloom, um, is a very kind, think, the Mother Teresa of Paladins. So instead of smiting everything, it's community work, charities, orphanages, that sort of deal. So she tends to be very kind and trusting. And so one of the illicit thralls like came up and was like, I got a thing for you. And it was one of the little, little, little buddies. And thankfully I rolled high enough to be like, oh, no, thank you. But she didn't know. Like it was literally a saved by the seat of my pants sort of roll. Um, we did end up going in there and like routing uh, the illithids, but only after getting captured because my poor, sweet, lawful, stupid paladin was like, oh no, no, we should absolutely talk to these squid people first. We don't know them. We can't just assume the worst. And everyone's like, Chalice, honey, sweetheart. Uh, she actually tried to communicate with him and, uh, the illithid. And he literally, like, reached out and touched her face. And she thought it was some form of, like, oh, we're going to communicate. We're bridging languages. Because uh, paladins aren't, like, huge spellcasters. Not like sorcerers or warlocks, etc. And, uh, she is a sweet, brave himbo. She is all sweet, no smarts. And, uh... Of course, as soon as the Illithid touches her face, he, it uses the ability that, like, like shocks you into unconsciousness or whatever the ability was. It was so long ago, I can't, I can't remember. Um, but she's the party tank. <laughs> and, and the party face, right? She's the one with the highest charisma and the highest AC. And so when she's on the ground, everyone else is like, God damn it. And so, you know, then we find ourselves in one of their holding chambers. We're all butt naked, and then we had to get out. But it was a really great time. So I have I have some knowledge of, of Illithid and the fuckery that they get up to. <sighs> all right. So we're going to go ahead and do the tutorial just because I think it's a good refresher. I haven't played Divinity Original 2, Divinity Original Sin 2 in quite a hot second. So... I'm so tempted to do an origin character. Look at them, they're beautiful. Oh, my boy. <sighs> Look at him. Look at him! <sighs> oh, we get to look at his stats, though. That man has a 10 charisma? It's almost his dump stat. I'm embarrassed for him. Honestly. Custom. There we go. All right. So, let's go to race. Oh! Buddy, you know I had to click it. You know I had to click it so fast. All right. Drow. Driven to the Underdark, most Drow have adopted a ruthless pragmatism, while the loath sworn delight in the goddess's evil tenants. The Seldarine, who, if you're not familiar with the Seldarine, they're they're like the pantheon for the elves, the, the accumulation of gods and goddesses. The Seldarine reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the elven pantheon, Corallon Lorethian. Not to drown you in too much elf lore, they're fighting Loth and Corallon. 
Because at the beginning of elven time, elves were formed out of Coralon's blood that spilled when he was fighting Grummish One-Eye. Whose name is Grummish One-Eye, because Coralon took that eye, baby. So, elves are made in his image, but Coralon is somewhat ethereal. He is strong emotion. He is the wind. He is your heart aching after a breakup. He's a force of nature in a way. And so the elves were made in that image. Some of them wanted to be more stable. They wanted to be more concrete, be one thing, have a permanent form. And so Lolf headed up that rival faction and she was like, Hey, Coralon, we really want to do this shit. And he's like, nah, nah. And then ran off to do Coralon things. Lolth is like, nah, I'm going to do what I want anyways. This is before her name was Lolth, but I don't remember what it is. It starts with an A and it's like this big mouthful of, of words, amalgam of something. I don't know. And so Lolth has her supporters, right? And everyone who wants to stay on Coralon's good side they kind of break away. Coralon finds out that Lulz, she's still on her ship. And she gets cast into the Underdark along with some of those supporters, right? Who become the Drow. While you get all the other sub races on his good side. What? Sun, Moon, Mithril. You've got the ones that turn into wolves. You've got the ones with wings. Wild wood. Did I get them all? All right, so race features. We, we can move nine? Don't we usually move 10 per turn? Let's uh, click on a different one. That one's nine. Okay, is nine standard then? Who's got short legs? There, 7.5. Okay, that's more of what I expected. Interesting. Okay, we are gonna play Drow though, for sure, for sure. We have proficiency with rapier, short sword, and hand crossbow. Oh, hand crossbows, y'all, hand crossbows. So the Drow that I play, her name is Alorinel Athene. She's a half Drow, arcane trickster, and Hang crossbows for days, baby. We've got superior dark vision. And yes, fey ancestry. This is great. This is almost exactly D&D, &D, which I absolutely love. Okay, let's do our sub race. <gasps> oh my God, they do give you the option. So it, it wasn't until recently that you could even choose to not be associated with Lolth. Like, there just wasn't that option. All drow were loth drow. And they retconned and adjusted the lore a little bit to stop making dark-skinned races inherently evil. <laughs> so, I'm really excited that we get the opportunity to choose. All right. Loth sworn drow. Raised by Loth's cult in the city of Menzo Branson. These drow embody the virtues of their corrupt and merciless goddess. Loth marks her followers with bright red eyes so those in the Underdark will learn to fear them on sight. Drow also can have shades of pink. Occasionally, there's purple, as you know, with best boy, Dritz Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to be on my elf shit so hard today, y'all. I hope you're in for it. Seldarin drow. Seldarin Drow can be found seeking allies from all over Faerun, aiming to settle their conflict with Lolth and each other by any means necessary. So, I'm surprised that they don't name the good Drow goddess. Her name is Elastrae, and she's uh, the patron goddess of all redeemed Drow. And... I'm surprised they didn't name drop her. We're going to name drop Lolf. Obviously, we're going to be Seldarine. All right. 
Now, now we get into the hard questions. Your girl typically plays Glamour Bards. My personal favorite is Glamour Bard. I don't know if we can play that subset. Because I really enjoy, as you've seen in such lovely titles as Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, Mass Effect Trilogy. I like to focus on charisma, solving things through diplomacy. And Bard's a really handy class to do that with. Okay, let's peep it. You know, music is more than fancy. It's power. Through study and adventure, you've mastered song, speech, and the magic within. So what do we, oh, oh my God, we get like actual D&D cantrips? I, I've never used Blade Ward in my life, but I get it. I always play kind of utility, magic oriented. So I want to do like, of course, vicious mockery, of course. Healing word I love. Yes, dissonant whispers. Tasha's. Tasha's is so good. I don't usually take care of them though, but I do see the benefit. So, oh, we can do Bardic Inspiration. Oh my God, I am fucking geeking out. Like this is, this is just D and D. It's just D and D. So we have two level one spell slots that we'll get, that we would get restored on a long rest. I'm interested to see what's gonna qualify as a long rest. Okay, so I'm already really here for Bard. Because this is, this is my bread and butter. As y'all heard, I have also played a paladin to level 13. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold justice and righteousness, you are a beacon of hope in dark times. Lay on hands, yes! And divine sense. Baby, give me smite. <laughs> what are you doing? I, I guess I don't know what level we're starting at for sure. Oh, I, I, level one. It's right there. Could I check half elf? What do you want to see about half elf? Curious, ambitious, and versatile, half elves are welcome everywhere, but struggle without a community to call their own. Elves, ever meet elves, I should qualify, are, uh, they're really not cool with half elves, but let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. So elves are the only, the only species in Faerun that have immortal souls. So when they die, their soul goes back into a pool per se. And there is an actual god in the Seldarine whose job it is to weave each individual life into an overall tapestry of experience because it's the same soul that goes through mortal existence through mortal existence but as an elf when you create a half elf you are risking that other elven soul it's kind of a roll of the dice at that point whether or not that soul's journey will end in that body because it's not all elf, it's just half elf. And I don't know whether that's because he just loses control or whether because it's not elven, it doesn't go back to Arvindor, elf heaven, but that's, that's canon. So there, there are decent reasons why elves don't really care for half elves because it's scary. It's scary because somebody's selfish act in, in having a half elven child might mean the end of an immortal soul. Isn't that wild? Uh, base racial speed's the same. Civil militia. Okay, it's just our proficiencies. Dark vision. Oh, we have better. Oh, it's because they're half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we still have our uh, advantage against uh, charms and sleep. 
cool. All right. We do not want to be Lil Sworn. We want to be Seldarine. So the drow that I normally play, my full-fledged drow, is a trickster cleric. If I can pick Hanali Selenil, I will actually scream. Clerics are representatives of the gods that they worship, wielding potent divine magic for good or ill. These are great because it's like, hey, you're such a cool person. Like, yeah, you can use my abilities. But these are chosen, right? You choose your god. God chooses you. All right, what are our cantrips? Resistance. Okay. Guidance. Familiar with sacred flame. Guiding bolt, of course. Healing word. Yes. Inflict. Do we have... Oh, we don't have cure rooms. We just have inflict. Shield of faith. Bane. Ooh. Always prepared. Yes, I do love that. Two level one spell slots. <gasps> They're giving me say loon. We've got coral on. <gasps> we do have illustrate. Oh, but we don't have. We don't have Honolly. <sighs> Where's the? We don't have soon either. So. Hanali Salonil is the elven deity of love and beauty. So remember, Emmeline started out as a uh, an RP character, a deity character, and that's her her goddess. She's technically a cleric, and uh, I know we've talked about it a little bit how I play that more along the lines of. Love in all forms, beauty in all things. So Hanali has a temple in Luthalspar, which is the capital of Evermeet, which is an island exclusively to elves. And uh, it's got big sprawling gardens. It has a museum where people create things and they leave it as offerings, things that they find beautiful, things that they've worked hard to create. And so in my canon, this is head canon to, to differentiate, they give classes on communication, on building up relationships. Um, they have therapy sessions. They have a very, very large spa, hot springs. It's hedonism, yes, but also self-care. And that's how I've always kind of seen her. She has a human manifestation of her called Soon, which they don't have here either. And I'm a little salty about it. There are a lot of deity choices. So because we're doing Seldarine, I'll probably do Illustrate because it makes the most sense. Exactly. She's the goddess of good aligned drow, beauty, song, and freedom. The dark maiden desires balance between all races and struggles, yes, against her mother Lulth's corrupt aims. So Illustrate is the daughter of Corlon and Lulth. Okay, so we got to go back to class. Do I want to make a comfort pick? Let's go through and look at all of them. I've never played a barbarian before in my whole life. The strong embrace, the wild that hides inside. Keen instincts, primal physicality, and most of all, an unbridled, unquenchable rage. <laughs> I'd like to rage. All right, of course we've got a rage. And yeah, you can't wear stuff. Okay, that's pretty standard for what I know about barbarians. We read, we read cleric two. We did go through all these druid. All right, druids channel the elemental forces of nature and share a deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. So we've got shillelagh, of course, of course, thorn whip. Yes, thunder wave is so good. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. Can you be subclasses in this? Like if I went wizard, can I be a blade singer? Blade singers are exclusively elves. It takes you 300 years just to learn how to do it. Um, they only teach it in Evermeet. And the people who teach it outside of Evermeet are not allowed back. <laughs> it's, a, it's a secret Evermeet thing. And it's, it's amazing. Oh my god. Now I'm going to have to look at wizard. What's going on? I do love all of the healing in this. 
But I've also never played a druid before. I've never played a fighter. Fighters have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin. They get second win. Monk. Channel your cosmic enlightenment by deftly dodging and efficiently disassembling your foes through stunning strikes and a whirlwind of martial arts attacks. I have uh, never played a monk. Flurry of blows, of course. Of You have to have key. Um, oh, cool. I didn't know that they also did the unarmored defense. Martial arts. Cool. We peeped paladin. I think if we were going to do um, a deity-based class, we'd probably go cleric instead. Ranger. Ranger was the very first class I played, of course. Because I had to have cats. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers, finding a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite prey. True strike and find familiar. Rogue with a Stealth, skill, and uncanny reflexes. Rogue's versatility lets them get the upper hand in almost any situation. Sorcerer. I told you all about my arcane trickster. I have not played a sorcerer, though. They are natural spellcasters, drawing on inherent magic from a gift or bloodline. Bone chill. Oh, these are all very standard. I haven't seen Burning Hands yet, though. Isn't that a cantrip, if I remember correctly? Eldritch Blast! Okay, Warlock. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron. Warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. <sighs> we could do a Fey Pact, Warlock. I have played Warlock, obviously. I've played several Warlocks. I played an Eladrin Warlock that I really, really enjoy. Of course, Fey Pact. Lorindris and wizard. They master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. I've only ever played a blade singer wizard, not like a standard wizard. So, Firebolt, Mage Hand. Mage Hand is such a good cantrip, right? Frost, of course, magic missile. Gotta have magic missile. Dude, Grease underrated. You can do so much cool shit with Grease. Alright, Mage Armor. Also very underrated. Arcane Recovery. So... It, does this work exactly like D&D? &D? When you hit level 3, you get to subclass? Is that how this is going? I'm worried about investing ourselves in a wizard. And then not having the option to do blade singing. So I might save that for a different playthrough. I won't be doing Warlock. Even though Fae Pact is great. Because I feel like I'm... God, I'm leaning Cleric so hard. Come on. A Trickster Cleric of Elastrae? That sounds so cool. Am I hallucinating, or are there refrains from Divinity Original Sin 2 woven into this soundtrack? We can't do Bard because there's no glamour. We said we'd do Cleric over Paladin. We're basically just recreating my drow. <laughs> I can't do Wizard because no blade singing. So Bard's out, Wizard's out. I love me an Archfey Warlock, though. But I feel like... Man, but we could do... I could make Chalice in this game. This is a problem. So, ironically enough, Belathine, my Toreador, was a... was my D&D drow character, and I just kind of poured it over her personality and stuff when we were trying out Vampire the Masquerade because I wasn't sure if I would like the system. And so I wanted something that I was familiar with. And now... Now my uh, VTM campaign is, like, the foremost campaign I've ever played. And, <gasps> dude, if Dritz is in here, I'm going to scream. I can't be proficient in persuasion as a cleric. I thought, you know, cleric's wisdom. I just always take charisma as my top snap because I'm me. 
Fuck. Paladins or Charisma, though. I was playing Chalice during our Curse of Strahd campaign. Um, you can even see the, in the background there. And uh, Merlin actually proposed to me using the campaign like in in character while we were playing and everyone else at the table knew except for me and uh through npc action and and what was going on at the table like uh that's how he proposed to me and so chalice means a lot to me chalice means so much to me we have a uh, character art of her and one of the elf NPCs, a dusk elf named Casimir. Literally at the end of the campaign, um, she rescues him out of Barovia. I'm not doing any spoilers for those of you who haven't played this module, and you really should because it's the best goddamn D&D &D module out there. Chalice rescues Casimir from Barovia, and they go back to Evermeet together because she's a sun elf. She's from Evermeet. And they just live happy little lives, recovering from all their trauma and being as soft and sweet as he never got the opportunity to be. I, oh man, am I convincing myself to make a paladin? I like how we're like, no, Emma's gonna stay like three hours just perfecting a character, but you never knew it was just me choosing a class. <laughs> you never knew I was gonna get stuck on class. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a cleric. I think I'm gonna do a drow trickster cleric. I'm like convincing myself this is, I can do this. And then I can play, I'll play Asterian with Merlin and I'll play Chalice with friends. And then if I manage to do it a fourth time, I can play Lorindris, my archfey warlock with another group. Okay guys. Four playthroughs sounds reasonable, yeah? All right, thank you for being patient with me and letting me work through this. Okay, let's go to cantrips. Wow, oh, that's right. Oh, my charisma is so low. Can I adjust these? I know that they let you play with them in Divinity Original Sin 2, but I'm not sure if they'll let you here. Yes, you can. You can't keep me from my charisma. <laughs> you can't keep me from maxing charisma, baby. Okay, this is my spell casting, my save. Oh my God, it's just like a D&D &D sheet. I am screaming. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so I want guidance, sacred flame. I'm not as familiar with the ones that they're giving me. Okay. So let me give these a good read because we're gonna have these for a hot second. I have dark vision, so this is not gonna be something we need so much. I might need Blade Ward. Produce flame. Okay, I don't want that. I'm not gonna be super utility. Guidance. Sacred flame. You 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 have to have a sacred flame. Your cleric. Advantage. <sighs> Why can't it be persuasion and performance? I'd be so in for that. I'm kind of like glass cannoning it. But we'll be okay. We'll be okay. So we'll get that down in abilities. Let's do gotta do trickery, baby. We're a drow. We'll read them though. We'll read them though. Life domain. It's an aspect of many good deities, offering spells that protect and restore the mind, body, and soul. So, I'm sure this is, yeah. Oh, it's bless! I thought it was gonna do cure runes and then like, <laughs> the other heal. So, our devotion and powers are healing spells. I do like to heal. So when I played Divinity Original Sin 2, I was doing Summoner and the Water one, I think. It's been so long. But I love spell casting and I love doing support stuff. 
So we've got that. Light. It's offered by deities of justice, majesty, and primordial flame, providing spells that dispel darkness and harm the undead. A very classic cleric. All right. Of course, fairy fire. You know what? I'm surprised we don't get fairy fire as a racial. You know, like in, in WoW, how you get some abilities that are connected to your lineage or your heritage, however you want to look at that. We should get fairy fire just for being a drow. All right. A domain shared by wicked, chaotic, and mischievous deities alike. Those who channel trickery specialize in deception and illusion magic. All right, so what do we have? Blessing of the Trickster. We can grant another creature advantage on their stealth. And then we get Charm Person. Did you know I have an actual t-shirt that has Charm Person on it and like all of the, the lettering and explanation from the actual spell made into a shirt because it's my favorite spell of all time. Disguise self, absolutely. Knowledge. Adaptable and adroit in all manner of languages and skills, your mind is an intellectual cup brimming with exquisite knowledge. Sleep and command. Command's a good spell. My forte is charm person, command, suggestion. Just let me be persuasive. I just want to be good at talking and pretty. That's all I want. Nature domain. You embody the vast viridian power of the natural world. An avatar of the subtle divinity of fruitfall, avian migration, woodland silence, and the landslide's roaring fury. It sounds really cool. Of course, we get shillelagh. Speak with animals. Also very good. Animal friendship. Oh. We're an acolyte of nature. We, ooh, we get a druid cantrip and become proficient in animal handling nature survival. That's real cool, though. Tempest, your faith has made you the very thunder that quakes the black firmament, the lightning coursing through the veins of a terrible storm. Fog? Yeah. And Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave is so good. Underrated spell. Wrath of the Storm. That's cool. You get an additional lightning damage. War. Fortified by a holy zeal, you brandish an arsenal of sacramental savagery to use against those you deem unrighteous. It's giving Paladin, Shield of Faith, Divine Favor, and then War Priest. Okay, so I love... I don't know how much we're going to have to use to size self. I do love Charm Person, though. It's so good. Okay. This is my favorite one to play as a drow. So this is what I'm leaning towards. Nature sounded really cool, but... Uh, I'm being nostalgic. I think we're going to do trickery. The other ones do sound very cool. The, the amount of replay value, y'all. The amount of replay value that we're getting here is just wild. Okay, deity. I don't even have to read anybody else. But, so, fun lore tidbits. Maliki is uh, Dritz Dordan's deity. Um, Tempest is Wolfgar's. Tyr, obviously, is a very common one. Mistra, magic. Um, Morden, I think, is Brunor's, if I'm not mistaken. Grumpsh, one eye. We talked about Grumpsh already. Talos, we're not playing Skyrim. Okay, Alistair, are you please? Background. I usually go. Oh, these are only the canon ones, right? As in from Player's Handbook. But. Although I do normally take Noble if I can't have any of the other ones. Let's, because I'm not as familiar with these, let's look at them. Acolyte. You spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the gods or god that you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness. No, thank you. Charlatan. You're an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, and more than happy to profit from it. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. So, I feel like that will be helpful for trickster stuff, but it's not necessary, right? We don't have to go that route. Criminal. 
You have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections. Profiting from criminal enterprise will lead to greater opportunities in the future. Deception and stealth. The problem is, those will probably be very helpful for us. I don't typically do much pickpocketing, but again, this is a video game, so I'm not sure how that's going to play in. Entertainer. You live to sway and subvert your audience. Engaging common crowds and high society alike. Preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heightens your charismatic aura. I don't really give a fuck about acrobatics, and performance isn't going to help us too much because we're not doing barred things to begin with. Unless... Well, I'm not going to sit here and play uh, 20 questions with it. We're going to try to go with our gut. Folk hero. You're a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger will make your legend grow. Animal handling and survival. Not necessarily the way I want to build. There we go. So we already have history, animal handling, medicine, perception, survival. Which I don't love. That is not how I would stat my character sheet. Okay. Oh, okay, thank God. It, it, it does adjust them a little. So if we go to Charlatan. So... Medicine, perception, deception are our standard ones so far. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. What is noble? Persuasion. Did we... We skipped guild artisan on accident. Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in a mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring new inspiration. I love insight and persuasion. All right, Noble. You were raised in a family among the social elite. Accustomed to power and privilege, accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status. History and persuasion. This is, uh, I feel like what I would normally do. Outlander, you grew up in the wilds, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding. Athletics and survival. Dang it. I'm like, oh no, how will we, how often will we need to use things like acrobatics and athletics? Sage, you are curious and well-read, with an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world will inspire you to put this knowledge to greater purpose. Soldier, you are trained in battlefield tactics and combat, having served in a militia, mercenary company, or officer corps. Show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess. I think this is a lore analysis. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of very little. Using your street smarts bolsters your spirit for the journey ahead. This is a really cool one because it also gives you the ability to know where you are and like get there faster in like any city. It's really cool. Okay, so I usually take Noble because I love persuasion. So we were looking at charlatan, sleight of hand and deception. I'd rather persuade than deceive. They're both charisma based, so it. Look at our charisma. You can't see it. Hold on. It's an eight. It's my dump stat right now. I hate that. We looked at entertainer. I don't want acrobatics or performance. Deception, deception. This is the only one that lets me have persuasion. No. Guild artisan also does. Insight's also really good. I don't care about history as much, but history might give us more lore, which I am interested in. Insight would be handy, though. So, my dilemma here is, do I want to go with a backstory that I'm going to like better? Noble. Or stats that I think I'm going to use more? You know what? You know what we can do? So, I remember Bellathene started out as a drow in D&D. &D. And then I ported her over to Vampire the Masquerade. Vampire the Masquerade Belle has kind of taken on her own life now because I've been playing her for five years. She is an artist 
she is a painter specifically. Why don't we kind of combine the Bella themes? So we can have, instead of our drow Bella theme being more of a socialite, she's kind of a political advisor in D&D itself. We combine the two and she can be an artist in this one. We can make it work with the lore. We can make it work with the character. And that way we can still get insight, which I do think is very useful. Abilities. Get me out. Give me. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's leave Dex alone. I want to take my con down. Wisdom we need. I want more int. Oh, I see. So we get one from somewhere. We don't get the plus two, right? Actually, we do get a plus two. What do you mean? Okay. Oh, I see what I did. I see what I did. I'm only going to have it at 15. Yeah, the bonuses do seem to be the replacements for your racial ability score modifiers. Because, like, God, the drow... I forget what the drow get. I know I get an extra language as a, uh, a high elf. And I think it is an extra charisma. God, it's been so long since I built character. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm... Gonna make Khan my dump stat instead. I'm trying to finagle this. Because <laughs> I want to have a decent enough intelligence score. But I guess we don't have anything that relies on intelligence right now. Charisma I want to have for persuasion. Wisdoms are spellcasting and literally everything else. Oh, religion's intelligence! Oh, I was wrong. But I don't give a fuck about that. I'm sorry, I know we're a cleric. But... We want more decks. Is that so, does that look okay? Con is useful for concentration on spells. Fuck. Maybe strength then. <laughs> there we go. Because this one's gonna have the same modifier as 17 anyways. Okay, I think we're good. All right, let's pick some spells. So we've got Guiding Bolt, which you kind of have to have. Inflict Wounds, three to 30 damage, shit. Healing Word, Sanctuary. I don't usually take Sanctuary. Let's look at our options. Oh, Cure to Destroy Water, yeah. Cure Wounds, yeah, I do usually take Cure Wounds. Bless, hmm. <gasps> I love command. Bane, sanctuary, protection from good and evil, very cleric -y, shield of faith. I love cure wounds. I've got healing word. So if I remember correctly, yeah, healing word's a bonus action. 1d4 plus three, 1d8 plus three. Let's take cure wounds instead. I'd rather like stop and heal rather than heal in the middle of combat. I think I'm good with that. I think I'm good with that. Are you ready to make our drow? All right, so how do I become a lady? Bless. Okay, so we have different body types. Oh, but I can't see. There we go. Okay, so we have small. Oh, and we have muscle mommy. Wow. I would like to be small, please. Got our identity. Oh, our voice. Where to next? 
Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Oh no. Be wary. This place is trapped. Oh, I like that one. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Where to next? Hmm. What okay. was that? So we liked four? Hell. Be wary. This place is trapped. Yeah, I like that one. Right, so we get to start off with our preset. Oh, what kind of... Oh. I usually do mine more of a lavender drow. I think that's very pretty. Wisteria. Okay, let's do that one. I don't want any scars, thank you though. Man, some of these are brutal. I'm looking at if there's any of these I wanna, I think we'll just adjust on our own though. What do you mean maturity? Is this gonna give us all the wrinkles in the world? Oh, can we, there we go. Yep, absolutely. <gasps> okay. You know me and drow freckles. If these aren't white, I'm gonna scream. don't see any freckles because they are not white drow freckles are white oh wait we can do freckle intensity can I change the color of the freckles <gasps> wow that's so amazing I love that this is included I guess we'll have to settle with dark freckles we've gotten general taken care of body art don't think I'm going to put any tattoos. Piercing stove. Lapis stud muffin. What is that on her ears? Oh, they're little bird skulls. Oh my god, there's so many. Oh my god, knife earrings, of course, of course. Barovia things? Barovia is where Strata is, if you didn't know. Okay, so the nose ring. Nose ring's pretty great. Arch face swirls. Wow, a commoner ring? But. It looks really cool, though. Bard rings. Her nose ring looks really cool. Okay. <gasps> oh. Should we be that person? The lavender's pretty, but I usually give my drows pink oh these are just gonna be hard red maybe we do go purple i like the lavender also bellathian in canon has lavender eyes so this is perfect okay makeup now, this is a really cool makeup style, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. But I do wanna look at everything. Oh, it's got the two dots. There are so many styles. Lip tint, let's change the lip tint so I can see that better. Why is it so dark? Oh, I see, I see. Hmm. 
black three. Honestly, I did like the dark. Oh my god, we can make it the glossiest known to mankind. <laughs> I did want it to be subtle, so that's bare lipped. Because I want her lips to be slightly darkened, but not much. And the black looks pretty quote unquote natural up until like maybe 50. So, what does this look like at 50? See, that's too pink. The gray takes away some of the depth. I wish I could do like a very dusky burgundy, but I think this will do, at least for now. Do we want to give her a little gloss? We'll give her just the teensiest amount of gloss. Okay. I'm gonna put it on super intense just so I can see it better. Wow, you do get to do some cool makeup stuff though. So if you made it metallic, oh, you just really darken it. Glossy? Interesting. Oh, does it just give you more highlight? So this is just liner. Oh, now it's dark as fuck, baby. This lets me see it a little bit better. Those are still pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. These are pretty wild cool. Can I zoom in more? Yes, there we go. Hmm. I'm gonna be here for seven years, I apologize. So this is so much, but this is not quite enough, you know what I mean? I guess we can just take the intensity down. I still do really like this. It's just cool. It's just cool. Okay, let's take the... I want the liner intensity to stay, but I want the shadow to come down, which I don't think I'm gonna get. Hmm, so maybe I pick a different one. Maybe we go with this one then? That was pretty extra though. God, that's much. That looks like you just slept in your makeup. God, I'm so suck. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna pull back and see what that looks like. We have the smokiest of eyes. I need to pull them down on her face too. Can we make this purple? Nah, I like the black better. Okay. That's what we'll do for now. Okay, let's, yeah, do this for hair. I like this hair a lot, as is. I love long hair. And the side braid is really pretty. Okay, so I definitely don't want brown lights. So highlights, there's a blue, an ash blonde. That's much better. And then for our gray, can we... It's not, oh, that's because there's none. So, if I did this. Oh, it actually makes it wider, which I like. 
Yes. Bless. Oh. That's cool. Furled wings? Oh, no thank you. We're not cosplaying snobby people from The Witcher. So this is what we had, which was called Neverwinter Scarf. I do love that. Oh my god, there's so many. Fairy elf. Just sit back. Oh my god, there's so many options. Bardic inspiration. The side bangs. The side bangs. God, there's so many. Oh my god. I just like have to look at some of these to see what they look like on a person. I'm really partial to this. Okay, we've got... Look at us go! Look at us go! We're doing it. Don't need any facial hair. So, do I not get to, like, move my eyes around? Do I get to pick where they sit on my face? Or I just have to pick a face? <gasps> These are the only faces I get. I was, like, waiting for the part where we got to, like, adjust cheeks and, like, I'd get to, like... Because you're supposed to level up eyes with about the, the, like, where your ear comes off from your head. And hers are pretty high. See? They need to be pulled down just a little. But, I mean, for me not being able to adjust, she looks pretty great. I'm honestly very surprised that I can't adjust her any more than this. I didn't even get to do her eyebrows. Did I miss brows in here somewhere? No brows? I get to adjust my brows in Mass Effect. Are you telling me I can't do it here? I'm shocked. All right, what do we think? This is much more limited than I thought. We spent longer picking our class. <laughs> I very rarely make characters that look like me in Minimancer. I'll usually make them after a D&D &D character of mine, which is what we're doing right now. You need a guardian. Choose one. I have to control two characters this whole time? Oh no, what are we gonna make now? A oh, guardian. Oh, who am I gonna make? I mean, I could make Chalice. Can I be a half drow? I don't know how to make it a. Oh, I guess it's a sub. sub race right here. Aha! Half drow. We can make a Lorinel. Oh, okay, so we don't get to choose any of the class stuff. Should I make like a friend of my character? This is a guardian. Belle doesn't really have- <gasps> I know. Oh my god. Oh, very cool. Wait, why can't I make this a man? Body type. There we go. No, he's slender. Oh wait, we get to hear voices. Remarkable. Truly. Follow oh, your wait. remarkable. Oh, and they get two. Truly. Good okay. Luck. Hold on, I need to look at this man. Look at the pores. 
this is wild. This looks so good. Necro, you're 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 getting there. You're getting there. I don't think y'all know this character. Um, so when Bellathine was Drow, she I think I've talked about this before. So we started out doing the Out of the Abyss module. And if you're familiar with that, you start in the Underdark. No spoilers, it's part of the setting. And uh, there is an NPC in the module named Jorlin Duskren. And uh, in perfectly drow fashion, he was in a combat situation against her. And she said, don't kill that one. That one's mine. Look at this boy! Look at this boy. This one's mine. And the party didn't kill that one. And he, uh... <laughs> he kind of became her boyfriend, but not by choice. Just drow things. But she's a very young drow, so boyfriend in the way of, like, <laughs> we're a boyfriend and girlfriend. And, and very Barbie in the way that, like, hey, let me come over tonight. And it's like, to do what? <laughs> so don't make more of that than what's there. Okay. We don't have too many options. And I'm upset I can't make my Drowmen pretty enough. I don't particularly love any of these faces. So let's make a character and then uh, and then adjust if we need to. So, because Jorlin actually exists in D&D lore, he has some like unique things about him. He does have like partial scarring on his face because he was attacked by Black Pudding. So, we'll include that. As much as we can, of course. I mean, that's pretty good. But, I mean, like, if you know what black pudding is, think, like, acidy. It's It's a nasty scar. It's a nasty scar. He's not going to have any of that. So, body art, I don't believe he has any. Oh, cute fact. Belle gave Jorlin a plus three great sword uh, because she's like a younger drow, less than a hundred. I think she's like 75. I think she just graduated from Arachtalinus and the cleric drow school for ladies. And so she's kind of brainwashed, but not completely. And at this point in time, at this point in time, She's made a lot of ground since then. She's had a lot of character growth. So it's not like malicious thing, but it's like, you, you have to stay here, but here, let me give you a present. <laughs> I don't think he has piercings. He definitely does have red eyes, but I like the darker red. What if he had deep purple? No, he definitely has red. Okay. I don't think he wears makeup. He's not Jarlaxle. Okay, let's zoom out a teensy bit further here. Oh, the messy bun's kind of a look. It's kind of a look. We do have to fix highlight intensity. Because we want it. I like the drow hair pretty white. Okay, so this like messy bun, whatever is going on is pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. Do I get to name this character? A mongoose tail? Oh, that's the fluffiest hair. Look at it go. <laughs> Luskin. I love how they're just like kind of pitching little bits of lore at you. 
A lone wolf bun. Only rogues can have that. Oh no, that's so bad. It's giving Farquaad. Oh my goodness. Oh, and then it's, oh, it's like the dude version of my hair. I love that actually. Cause it sits a little bit different on him. What is this one? Look, Xavier, I'm gonna need you to calm down. That's the second time one of y'all has added me about Marco. But at least Necros was remembering the lore of my character. Belafine the vampire um, has a child, as in like, embraced a vampire, uh, whose name is Marco. But modeled after the Marco that <laughs> Xavier was talking about. I have to admit that the short hairstyles are kind of dashing. Look at those curls. He looks like George Washington. <laughs> Look at that shit. God, there's so many, there's so much. This is hard. Why is this harder than Doing bells. The bunder cut. Two hours later. So in beta, the voice narrator, instead of giving this, you need a guardian, this was, who do you dream about in the night? We're on the same page for Belle. It's the same person. I love that for her. Oh, he's an elf. No facial hair. All right, so let's go back, was it general? And we were gonna look at the other faces, right? Now that we'd chosen. God, this one looks like a Chad. He'll do. Do I get to name him? Do I get to name him? Oh, I forgot to do his, uh... I like the wisteria again. It just looks, it's such a pretty purple undertone. Okay, yeah, we'll do, which shade is this? Amethyst? We'll do Amethyst 8. So he's not the exact same color as Bell. Okay, awesome. Two hours in and we're out of character creation, I think. <laughs> you know, I was talking about that plus three greatsword. I still have you know, like when you're playing Adventures League and they give you like the actual little placards for the weapons and stuff that you get, the other loots. I still have that placard. And it's sitting in a display for all of Merlin and I's romantic D&D accoutrement. Thanks for watching. For more content, you can check out these videos or my stream on Twitch or my reaction content on TikTok. All the links are in the description. Have a great rest of your day.